frankly, he now understands the fine line that you have to walk, when to push, and how to shove, and he's gotten better results. All of the players over there respect him to a man. They would go through the wall for him, and that's all the coach can ask. His style, though, personality style, is still very different from Layden. Was one of the keys that he changed the offensive style very little? He stayed with what worked, and the players appreciated that? Not, it's not so much the difference in style, it's the mental approach. And Sloan has toughened these players up in their mental approach to the game. He didn't have to change anything because that was all working, but he did want them to be tough. We come back to you at the Coliseum and go immediately to our computer land fast stats. They are kind of game. Great shooting, good offense, 14-10 Jazz leads. And old rivals Drexler and Hanson. Chad Strom steps in. Well, I wonder if Hanson sent a Christmas card to Bart Coco. It is, it is part of the byplay that goes on out there when you're trying to establish your turf. Hanson has always had a tough time against Drexler trying to get a leg up. 14-10, Jazz with the ball. This is the side of the floor that he does not like to work on as much. That is Carl Malone. Buck Williams down, now back up. Porter sliding through the defense, meets Eaton, can't score. Did everything right, but ran into Mark Eaton, and that hurt him. Pushing foul is called on Buck Williams. Second personal foul on Buck, second team foul. Uh, you'll see the bump right there. You can only do one of two things. It's either a foul or you get the ball. Mark Bryant comes in. Buck Williams sits down. Halfway through quarter number one, you see the score on your screen. Carl Malone. Blind pass to Hanson. On the move. Hanson misses, but Eaton misses the follow. Mark Bryant. Terry Porter. Quick entry pass. Duckworth spins back and scores. Kevin Duckworth. 14-12. Jazz by two. Five and a half left in the first. In this situation, what they're trying to do is give you another version of their two-man game with Stockton and Malone. They've got Stockton looking for Carl Malone. He decides to shoot, gets the three. He's got 11 in the first period. And is five for five from the floor. And 5.05 left to go in the quarter. Jazz by five. Largest now, lead. Now they come back with a two-man game. Duckworth bounces out. Eaton comes out and tracks him down, but is late. The shot is short. Here's Stockton. Into the ball game for the Jazz. Number 41 is Thurl Bailey. Well, Stockton, and uh, 11 Delaney Rudd. Stockton gets a short breather. Delaney Rudd, who played well against Seattle, uh, when Stockton got an initial foul trouble, uh, we'll see if he plays with more authority tonight. Foul is on Clyde Drexler. Blazers third team foul. Rebound to Kevin Duckworth. Drexler. Yes. Clyde Drexler. Clyde continues to have a solid year from the shooting, and in particular since he shook off some of the early effects of the inflamed bursa sack in his right elbow. It's a three-point jazz lead. Again, the way to shut down a lot of that inside play is to try to have some pressure on the pass for Hanson, try to keep it alive. Get an Eaton rebound foul. First foul on Mark Eaton, second team foul on the Utah Jazz. Talk about guys that just don't have any touch. Mark Eaton, even at the basket, unless it's a dunk, just no touch. They want a two-man game between Porter and 
Duckworth, they get Delaney Rudd on the foul. But again, this is a play that if they can get the right communication understanding, it's going to be something that will carry both players a long ways through their careers as long as they play together. Team fouls now even at three. Duckworth drawing Eaton out. And calls for traveling. An unpopular call at the Coliseum. Well, fans always want to know how can you travel when you're still dribbling the ball. <laughs> and the answer, Rick Adelman still wants to know the answer. 340 left in the period. Delaney Rudd at Wake Forest, a two-year backcourt teammate of Blazer guard Danny Young. And they turn it over on a bad pass. Over the head of Carl Malone. Well, the tempo on the ball game is still in favor of the Utah Jazz as Drexler pulls the string. Rebound, Mark Ryan. Shot blocked, try again, block again, and knocked out of bounds by Markey. Here comes Big Mike Brown, 6'9", out of George Washington, having his best NBA season. Terry, Juan, Terry Porter. First basket for Porter, and the Blazers, down five, have scored four straight, trail now by one. We move on three minutes left in the first quarter. Delaney Rudd for three. Rebound for Bailey. They caved in the, the rebounders and they all knocked the ball away. Duckworth stays after it, knocks it off Mike Brown. Timeout, 2.44 left first period. We've got a one point game, Utah and the Blazers. Another sellout crowd at Portland's Memorial Coliseum. And Steve, you talked about tempo between these two teams. And we come back to this question. It's one we ask often. What can Portland do to try and increase tempo unless, in fact, they make stronger commitments defensively? Is there a way that they can up the tempo, play more into their own strength? Well, a lot of it is, you know, sometimes you push the ball up the court after a made basket and you try to get a quick opportunity, which gets the opponent into a transition game. Uh, a team that has a great deal of success against Utah in doing that is the Denver Nuggets, but that is their style, consistently their style, and it is something that other teams have to think about. And if you don't, then you end up in a half-court slower exchange with them because of the way... Stockton and Malone play in such a methodical manner at the offensive end. So every time they make it, you've got to make them think about getting back to the other end of the floor and be concerned about an offensive transition. We've seen another strong start from Kevin Duckworth tonight, and it's certainly a big turnaround for his play against Utah a year ago, where in four games he shot only 34% and was often very frustrated by Mark Eaton. Well, I think a lot of it came uh, because there was a lack of thought uh, and understanding of what kind of player he was playing against. And if you play to Eaton's strength, he's going to make it very tough for you to score on him. And he has recognized that, and that's the reason he's getting better shots. Two forty-four left to go. First quarter, Jazz leading the Trailblazers by one for Portland. Now you'll see rookie number three, Cliff Robinson, six ten out of Connecticut, on the front line. He is with Kevin Duckworth and Clyde Drexler. Here's Drexler inside, and Robinson scores. Mark Bryan, Terry Porter round out to five on the floor for Portland. Next dead ball, we'll see Danny Young. Blazers now back in a one-point lead. Rudd to Bailey. Again, now this is not the exchange that they like. They want to get a guard looking for him down low. They come back to the other side of Mike Brown. Weak side rebound to Mark Bryan. Lead for Drexler at the two-minute mark. Delaney Rudd. Delaney Rudd is more aggressive and playing with more authority as Malone tips that one in, and that comes off the success he had against uh, the Sonics. Porter. Porter the other way, scores in transition. 
So it's 2019 Blazers by one at the minute 40 mark. All of Utah's points, save two, belong to Stockton and Carl Malone. Hanson, a three-point threat. Three-point try, comes up shy. Thurl Bailey, blocked by Clyde, Mike Brown. Block again and foul. Danny Young in for Portland, Daryl Griffith in for Utah, Stockton back in. Well, the ball is knocked away, Mark Bryan trying to come back in and make a play on the ball, gets a piece of Mike Brown who will go to the line. Brown is one of those players that self-made. Uh, he came in with size, not a lot of ability, but has worked real hard and has improved the things that he can do well and understands his limitations, gets both the free throws. He had to be one of those guys where the coaches couldn't believe he wasn't going to play football. Clyde, score, and is fouled by Daryl Griffin. Clyde out of the blocks quickly tonight. He has eight points, has made four of five shots. Twenty-two, twenty-one Blazers, and Clyde will try and give Portland a two-point lead. The lead is there. One minute to go in the period. Right now. Open is the grip. Still a good shooter. Can score. Brown shot block. And here comes Drexler. Three on two. Duckworth. Score! Blazers lead by four. Game story on your screen. Malone. Foul sends the ball to Portland. Offensive charge, Carl Malone. A little bit of confusion by the Jazz that time, and they were fluttered a little bit by the defensive pressure of Portland. Malone takes a tough shot, ends up getting the charge. Portland will hold for the final shot of the period. And the Blazers on a 13-4 run. Drexler slices, slices, scores! 11 for Clyde, Blazers by 6, a 15-4 run. Seven seconds left. Stockton. Still perfect, six for six. Young counts if it goes. And after one from the Coliseum, Portland 27, Utah 24. Saw Jim Duggan, takes on the big boss man. Brutus the Barber Beef Cake battles the genius. A special submission match between Rugged Roddy Garvin and Greg the Hammer Valentine. Tag team action with the Bushwhackers against the fabulous Rougeau brothers and a special brother love with his guest Sapphire and sensational Queen Sherry. This year, call your local cable system now for details. If you're a bargain hunter, you'll love this. January bargain days now at Les Schwab. Who says January has to be dull? Not at Les Schwab, not now. It's January bargain days. As each store pulls out all the stuffs, cleans house, clears out, and gets rid of odds and ends, one of a kinds and leftover stock. You can't miss the bargain. Just look for the red tag. Enjoy popcorn or peanuts, balloons for the kids, and red tag bargains that say this is a great buy. January bargain days now at Les Schwab. I've got news that can save you time when you need it most, first thing every morning. It's the morning update right here on 1190 KEX Radio. Listen for just 20 minutes each morning and we'll give you all the information you need. You'll get updates on the day's top news, Paul Harvey at 7.30, constant air watch traffic and weather, plus an in-depth weather forecast at a quarter past every hour. You can depend on us. Tomorrow, get your 20-minute morning update from 1190 KEX AM Radio. We go to our Computerland stats board, where after one, Portland leads Utah 
Uh, you see the scoring leaders, Drexler with 11, John Stockton with 14. Danny Young, Cliff Robinson, and the rebound to Mark Bryant. Also in the game now for Portland, 44, that's Drazen Petrovic. For the Jags, you'll see 45, Eric Lechner in the game. Danny Young, two-point try. Well short, stocked in the rebound. Now the two-man game is not nearly as big a factor when Malone is not out on the floor. They'll come back, try to go through Thurl Bailey, but a lot of his stuff is outside in rather than inside out. Shot clock at three, Daryl Griffin. Foul is called, an elbow touch. Griff will be at the line for a pair. Once this man was king. <laughs> Golden Griff, Louisville, NCAA champions. And a guy with a reputed vertical leap somewhere at one time between 42 and 48 inches. It's a two point blazer lead, 27 25. You see the Jazz are coming with some perimeter pressure, and that means you've got to look inside. Portland has played into it primarily by turning the ball. Good penetration by Petrovich. And two for Kevin Duckworth. Portland 29, Utah 25, 10.40 to go, first half. Thurl Bailey. In the past, Thurl Bailey has been the difference for the Jazz against the Blazers. Whenever one of the other two players, Stockton or Malone, were having an off night, he played huge ball games against Portland. Danny Young's miss, Mark Bryant's rebound. Long in the follow, wrestled away by Robinson, but out of bounds off flip. Back in for the Jazz. 7 4, 290 pound marquee, Mike Brown out. 29 25, Portland by four. We move on 10 minutes left, first half. Lechner. Lecter can score and he likes it down deep on the box, so you want to try to keep him away from that area if you can. Draws it. Long, Petro, the duck, score! And Kevin Duckworth has a dozen, and the Blazers lead by four. Duckworth five, or Duckworth six of seven, and Drexler five of six, carrying the offensive load. You see what Portland is trying to do defensively is disrupt the cuts and the screens across, so that it makes it a little bit longer for them to get the ball sealed Duckworth. Danny Young, defense is back. Kevin, outside. Bryant has it again inside, and Eaton blocks again, it'll be a jump ball. Good effort by Mark Bryant, he keeps the ball alive, this is his favorite move to bring it back underneath across the other side of the basket, but he brings it right into Mark Eaton who makes the block. Duckworth out, Kersey in, and Mark Bryan, Steve, has seven rebounds since he's come off the bench. That's a strong board effort by Big Mark. Carl Malone is back in for the Jazz to the Golden Grip. Rebound, Kersey. Petro open. Long, Eaton. Well, that's what you want to see Petrovich do, catch and shoot. Malone the other end, block. Jerome Kersey with the block, re-steal, Golden Griff. 31-29, Portland by two, eight and a half to go in the half. Highlights, stats, special feature, NBA scores all in intermission. Kersey is long, rebound to Petro, slide under and score. First basket for Drazen and the Blazer lead is again four. 
33-29. Stockton again, left wing. Bailey. First basket for Thurl Bailey, whose numbers are down this year. Well, he's been averaging 18, 19 for the last couple of seasons. He's right around 12 or 13, so it's a minus six or seven points. And they've got to see the move there. But Robinson with the jump shot over Malone and the foul. Robinson continues to get solid minutes from Rick Adelman. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Rick Adelman calls timeout. 7.41 left in the half. Portland leads Utah by four. Be all, sir? Uh, no, uh, give me one of those new instant scratch tickets, you know, uh, cash, uh, cash. Uh... Be very careful with this now, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so, why do they call it cash X? It's back and it's still red hot. Play the new Cash Explosion Instant Scratch game today. You could win up to $1,000 instantly from the Oregon Lottery. Cash Explosion. Welcome to First Interstate Bank Territory. The biggest bank territory there is. Because only First Interstate can help you with your banking needs in more cities and states than any other bank system. So whether you're in your hometown or traveling out of town, First Interstate Bank is always ready to help you. So come to First Interstate Bank. We go the extra mile for you. With 10 seconds to go, it's all tied up. Send in the secret weapon. Can it be? Yes, it is! The legendary Wild Willie Wet. Wow, Willie Wet. My brother, the greatest man to ever play the game. With Wild Willie, will they win the case of Miller Lite and go to the Super Bowl? Just give me the ball. How were the Utah Jazz built? Well, it wasn't all with early picks, Steve. Well, they've done a good job of finding the people that fit the Jazz mold. Robinson gets the three-point play. 36-31, Blazers, 7.35 to go, first half. Defensive pressure by Portland, a quick drive by Malone Glock. Jerome Percy, strong defensive play again. The Jazz, their starting five back on the floor. Petro with Bobby Hanson. Open man, Bryant. Won't fall, tough roll. Carl Malone the rebound. Hanson to Malone with Bryant. Again, the strength of Malone is evident. He spins away from the, the, the double team. He's got people draped all over him still able to get the ball away and a chance to go to the free throw line. That ball almost went in. Bryant has done an outstanding job against him here in the early part of the game. And for Bryant, you like to see him get a hoop at the other end of the floor. Uh, he has had a tough time offensively. Not only tonight, but in previous ball games. Out of the lineup, Thurl Bailey and back in, Blue Edwards. Malone is a type of player whose game builds as the game goes along, so you don't like to see him get a huge start because that means you're in for a long night. Cook Robinson will give him another free throw. Couldn't stay out of the lane. Carl, very much like a namesake, Moses Malone, who has the same kind of wear you down game. Now they get into a game rhythm, and the more they play, the better they play. Somewhat like a running back, uh, you know, the more times they carry the ball, the more they get a feel for the game and what they have to do. Inside seven minutes left first half, Blazers by three. Petro, Kersey. Speed Brian in there for Mark Brian Baskin. His first of the night. And again, draw Eaton to the ball handler, the quick feed to the open man on the weak side. 
Portland by five. Again, they're working for Malone down on the box. He's locked up with Bryant. They're going to get the hole, but you can't get Once you get locked on him, you've got a release. He never did, an easy call for Jack Deese to make. Second foul on Mark Bryant. Now you'll see him lock up right there, and you'll see how tough it is to contain him. He's got both hands on Malone right now, and he's still being held away from the ball. Non-contact game. Malone. Terry Porter's rebound. Blazers leading 38-33. Bryant. Robinson. Yes. Good decision by both of those young players. Bryant realizing he's too deep for Robinson with a good pull-up. Timeout. Utah. Portland. 5-7. If the fans at the Coliseum are excited about the Blazer lead, I suppose it's understandable. After all, Utah has won nine of the last ten meetings between the two teams, and here at the Memorial Coliseum, they've won for the last four times. Coliseum fans are not used to that kind of treatment at the MC. Well, they're not used to it, and they're not used to seeing the Jazz win here. Regardless of what has happened here in recent history, this has been a tough place for the Jazz to come and get a victory, and they've usually seen a lot of blowouts here. So even during the early part of the growth of Stockton and Malone, it was tough for them to win in this building. Portland would like to reestablish that. One of the subjects that starts being discussed about this time of the year is the All-Star balloting, and we'll stay away from Kelly Trapuca for just a moment on the eastern side. When we were in Salt Lake City, I was somewhat surprised to find out they'd passed out two ballots to every fan in the Salt Palace, and then the public address announcer encouraged every fan to fill out two ballots and pass them to the center aisle. Now well, I know why they get the early lead. Uh, they get an early lead, but again, that's part of what they can do with their 250,000 ballots. <laughs> you can vote as many times as you like. Portland Trailblazers, Utah Jazz. Second meeting of the year between the two teams. The opening one taken by the Jazz, 113-109. to 109. Remember in Utah when the second unit didn't really play with the confidence and verve that they needed to. They've done it tonight, and they've gotten good results. Good block by Cliff Robinson. For a moment, Utah was found themselves in an old 1-3-1 offensive set. Perhaps not by design. Well, they did a good job of beating the pressure of Portland, and then the defensive play took the dunk away from Mark Eaton. Blue Edwards, who seems a little tentative and uncertain as to what he wants to do. It appears that he doesn't want to be a guy that comes in and just takes over offensively, and yet he's put himself in an area where he's had the ball, had shots, and passed him up, turns it over. Fly Drexler back in, draws in Petrovic out. Five and a half to go, first half. Porter. Drexler. Curse wide open. Double pump. Too yeah. open? Not too open. He wasn't ready to release it. So he lost it. Porter. Mark Bryant. And after a very quiet season, this has been a coming out tonight for Mark Bryant. Well, he's got an extended amount of playing time. With Buck Williams picking up two early fouls, he got the call, he has responded, and when you respond, coaches generally let you stay in the game. That means something good is happening out on the floor. Malone, double, Hanson. Under pressure, deep for Drexler. Portland leading by 11. Four and a half to go, first half. Well, Drexler got a piece of Hanson from the rear, even though he shot the ball, and that's what Hanson was upset about. He never got back defensively. Again, the pressure against Malone on the double team, they get a charge. Very quickly, throw Bailey back into the ball game. John Stockton re-enters. And they stand for Mark Bryant.
Nine rebounds for Mark Bryant. What a job. 44-33. Now they've got Blue Edwards playing in back. Bob Hanson has come out of the ball game. Buck Williams returned with his first two of the night. 46-33, Utah begging for mercy. A 20-second timeout. What Jerry Sloan is trying to do right now is steady his team. He's trying to tell them, all right, fellas, we got to withstand this rush that they put on them right now. we got to come back with some good offensive presence because Portland is now double teaming on Carl Malone down on the box with Stockton out of the ball game. So they're forcing him to give it up, and they're not aware of where to make the pass to get the score, and they have stalled. So they've got their best offensive unit out on the floor. Malone, Edwards, Stockton, and Thurl Bailey. And you saw the hustle boards at the Coliseum. It doesn't begin to tell the story. Blazers by 13. Stockton has not taken a shot in this quarter. Edwards. Thurl Bailey. Second basket. 46-35. Terry. Oh, Terry Porter. Portland now shooting at 56%. Porter, three of five, plus four assists. Drexler, the same number, plus 13 points. You see, they run the two-man game with Eaton and Stockton, except they don't look for Mark Eaton at the basket. He was wide open. Steele, Drexler, Porter, score, Terry Porter. Sweet right now for Portland fans. The well, Nemesis see, down 15. You see what good, hard, aggressive play can do and what it can create, and now you see they're responding. Every time they double team, the Utah Jazz are somewhat confused and they don't know where to go with the basketball. Stockton to Balin. Malone. Traveled with the ball. Mark Bryant, Steve, has already tied his career high in rebound at nine against Seattle, January 10th last year. Duckworth, what a roll by the Blazers. They lead by 17. Well, after a tight first period, the Utah Jazz have only scored 11 points so far, so now offense becomes a key for them, and in the past, they've always had bread and butter in Stockton and Malone, and again, there's some confusion as to what they want to do. Malone. 10 points for Carl Malone, 52-37. We're inside two minutes, as you see. Drexler, Kersey, and the Portland Trailblazers are out of sight right now. Sensational play, 54-37. Lou Edwards showing you that he can stick it when he shoots it. He gets a three-pointer. 54-39. 56-39. Buck Williams. Again, a hard push the other way, and that leaves Buck Williams an opportunity to get that one up and down. Stockton, seventh shot, seventh basket. He still has not missed. Drexler stays on fire with 15 points and one miss in eight shots. Thurl Bailey block Drexler. Here comes Terry. Rebound Malone. Still a good look by Porter. You've got to occupy Stockton some. Traveling, Utah turns the ball over again. This time with half a minute to go in the quarter, and the Blazers leading by 17. Now a 20-second timeout for Rick Adelman. And look and listen to this crowd.
one of Portland's stronger quarters of the year. Well, it's been a tremendous game for Portland in the second period at both ends of the floor. They've been the aggressors. They've gotten shots for people where they could do some damage. The ball has gone in, which has really fed their defense. They've seen that by doubling, good results are coming from it, so they're more active at the defensive end. So the two have gone hand in hand, and the Utah Jazz have not been able to come back with points of their own. Well, I suppose, Steve, those are the numbers that told Rick Adelman that his career with the Jazz would not be a long one. He played for New Orleans briefly, and that was in his final season as an active player. Seven-year pro career. His best years, of course, right here in Portland. So here we go. Shot clock is running six ahead of the game clock, and you see the game clock on your screen. Clyde. Woo! 17 for Drexler, 8 of 9 from the floor, and 6 assists. Stockton. Malone. Malone now aware that the people are flying at him from all directions. A good pump fake, and he knocks down an outside shot. Inside a second, and that'll do it. They'll go to the locker room with the Trailblazers riding the 17-point cushion after a sparkling first half. Portland 60. Utah, 43. You all know Payless as a drugstore. But you may not know that Payless also carries hundreds of quality name brand products. Familiar names you know and trust. Find the selection you want and the quality you need at your nearby Pay Less Drugstore. Where do millions of the world's vehicles go when they need to fill up? The same place you do. BP. Don't worry, you were here first. BP, on the move. The Egghead Discount Software Company, America's leading software seller, had a growing problem. It seems they were growing, but their communication system wasn't. So the people at GTE analyzed the problem and designed a customized system that improved efficiency, reduced network costs, and left plenty of room for growth. You see, at GTE, it's not just communications we offer, it's solutions. Call us, no matter what size you are. Yep. Keep the change. Every yeah. year, millions of dollars in foreign goods flow into Oregon. Yeah, I just got in. And business is booming. All right, what room are you in? Especially for some local importers. Hey, Their management is aggressive. Uh, Their customers extremely loyal uh, yeah, on the ground. but if you want to know more about this highly successful business you need a good source because they don't publish an annual report if it matters to oregonians it's in the oregonian portland's memorial coliseum halftime let's take a look at some excellent first half highlights well the utah jazz are a team that centers are attacked around two players carl malone and john stockton Stockton has had two tremendous starts against Portland. He's done it inside and out. Strong penetration against the contact and the hoop for Stockton, whose presence uh, is a big factor for the Utah Jazz. Portland, of course, needs a hot start from their big player, and that's Clyde Drexler, and that's the kind of start he got it as uh, he went against the defensive pressure against Bob Hansen. Duckworth, aware of where Mark Eaton is, using his mobility to get away from him, not worried about making contact, spins the other way. Duckworth also had an, an excellent opening period. And I suppose you can tell when a player is ready to play by some of the things that he has done. And Drexler, whenever you see him in the stance of circling the ball between his legs, that means that he really is going to be looking to score, and that's just what he did in the first half. But all of the Trailblazers had a good understanding of the kinds of shots that they needed to take and make in order to be a factor in this first half of play, particularly in the second period in which they dominated. Good, strong penetration after the made basket by Terry Porter, 
I mean by the Utah Jazz results in an easy basket for Terry Porter beating him back the other way. Mike Brown thought he had a follow blocked from the rear by Drexler and again Portland gets in the open court. This is when Portland and Drexler do some of their best damage and on the other end of the play, Kevin Duckworth. Drexler and Duckworth combined to make 15 of 18 shots. Again, you'll notice that Portland did a great job of spreading the Jazz defense. And whenever you can do that, you can get penetration. Drexler on the dunk. Drazen Petrovic with penetration and a dunk for Kevin Duckworth. So the factor of Mark Eaton has been non-existent because of ball movement and personnel movement out on the floor. Thurl Bailey hasn't had many chances to post up and swing that hook tonight. He's normally a bigger factor against the Trailblazers. And I'm sure Jerry Sloan has got to feature him in his second half attempt to get back into the ball game. Drazen Petrovic in the right spot at the right time finds Kevin Duckworth for a two after a hustle play from Portland gets the ball back for them. See that Petrovic is still used to beating people off the dribble and it's been tough for him to really get in areas where he felt comfortable shooting the ball. Mark Bryant is beginning to find some team for himself. Found one for Cliff Robinson on an exchange and an easy two for Cliff Robinson. You see the double team is what got Portland going. Black from the rear by Drexler. Mark Bryant with the good look ahead. Drexler will finish easily. And when you hear teams talk about their defensive pressure, that's what they mean. Making the opponent do something that they don't want to do. You'll see that the Jazz are jumping and leaning at a lot of situations. And Portland's been able to find people right at the basket. Mark Bryan with another dunk over the top. And if you're in the locker room now and you're Mark Bryan, you've got to be just delighted with the way things went in the first half because it has been a frustrating year. Well, he has waited. But what coaches say, is you've got to be ready when your time is called. And when you're ready and you play well, then your time comes again. If that happens and you don't, then you're back in the freezer. No telling when you'll thaw out. Buck Williams, who was a non-factor due to foul problems, hammers home a dunk at the end of the first half. Blazer shooting was sensational. Of course, you can shoot well when you're making a lot of dunks and lay-ins, but those weren't all the shots. At halftime, the Blazers shooting 60% have 60 points and lead by 17. I can't pick up anything. Still, huh? Cold filtered, never heat pasteurized, Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. <laughs> Many airlines offer reduced rate fares. Unfortunately, that's not all they've reduced. It makes you wonder, what's next? I'd appreciate it. Do you have four quarters for a dollar? Anybody have two quarters for a dollar? Yes, miss, do you have two quarters for two dollars? Two quarters for five dollars, please? Oh boy, I'd appreciate it. On Alaska Airlines, we have low fares too, but you never know it by the way we treat you. Just need a little tune-up, same as last year. Give her a try, I think you'll notice a difference. To improve the performance of your Toyota, make sure it's serviced by the people who know Toyota's best. You're right, it does run better. Genuine Toyota parts and service. We've got more for you. The history, the great moments, the all-time records, they're all in the official NBA Basketball Encyclopedia. Now available from Villard Books at your local bookstore or call 1-800-NBA-5700. That's 1-800-NBA-5700. I drive a million miles to be with you tonight. So if you feel
in. Here's uh, Terry. Oh! oh! At the foul line, doubling all the way, throws it up, and lo and behold, it went in at the buzzer. Laser Cable continues with first half stats in a moment. really excited over our new high-octane BP Super Gasoline. It's the brand new premium that keeps your valves and fuel intake system free of carbon deposits other gasolines leave behind. So, you get more power than ever before. Hello? Hello? New high-octane Super. BP. On the move. Somebody? First Interstate Bank. We go the extra mile for you. Guys, in the second half, let's try to remember what we are playing for. Pride, glory, and 24 cans of America's favorite light beer. Now, we don't care about finding Super Bowl tickets in that case. The airplane, the hotel, or the money. We don't care about those things, do we? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah! Okay, okay, we do. You can win a free trip to the Super Bowl, too. Look for this display wherever Miller Lite is sold. And don't forget our secret weapon. <laughs> We're gonna get that case! <laughs> Portland's Memorial Coliseum, a sellout crowd enjoying the Trailblazers' 17-point lead, 60-43 to at halftime. We go to our computer land stats board, and Steve, these are numbers that make Blazer fans smile. Well, the leading scorer has been Drexler on great shooting. Duckworth followed, same kind of shooting. Terry Porter putting some pressure on John Stockton now, beginning to pick up his game. The two leading scorers for Utah, Stockton with a perfect night, Carl Malone beginning to pick up. You see the shooting percentage, and that's the difference in this ball game at this point. Portland is just sure to the mark, shooting 60 to 40 percent. Uh, Three-point field goals. John Stockton has gotten both of them. There have not been a lot of free throws for either team. Portland is perfect. The Jazz are shooting very well from there. The rebounds won in favor of the Jazz, but they have turned the ball over more times. Portland has scored because of it. Let's add one other key number because I think it helps explain the kind of game Portland has played, and that is assists, Steve. The Blazers have 21 on their 29 baskets, and Utah in the first half has only nine assists, five to Stockton, who's averaging 14 a game. Well, you're sitting there with the NBA scoreboard, so let's take a look at what happened around the NBA. Well, we take a quick wrap around, and you see the Los Angeles Clippers have made a little history for themselves. Ooh. First time since 1979, a win in the Boston Garden. Bird sprained his ankle in that ball game. Cleveland is a winner. Philadelphia, a big winner over the Dallas Mavericks, and Dallas has been playing very well. So, again, Philadelphia continues to show what a schizophrenic team that they can be. <laughs> uh, one night, they're very dangerous and damaging. Indiana, losers and big losers to uh, the Detroit Pistons at the Palace. Chicago, behind the 43 points of Michael Jordan, continue to play well. And Miami trying to get a win and break that losing streak of eight in a row lead the Seattle Supersonics at the half by two. Well, here the Portland Trailblazers are riding a 17-point cushion, and 
certainly very few in the assemblage tonight of those watching around the Northwest on Blazer Cable would have expected such a delightful first half. And it was a consistent half after the team down 17 to 12 really exploded and dominated play from there on, shooting 62% in the first quarter and 60 in the second. Well, they did it with good aggressive play. And when you play with authority, you generally are gonna get good results. You talk about it a lot and you can see the difference between passive and aggressive. That means you're challenging the opponent and at the initial point of attack, making it difficult for them to get to spots where they want. And when you do that and you score at your end of the floor, you're more inclined to come back and do it again. And that's what's happened for Portland tonight. As you take a look at the injured Wayne Cooper. Coop will be out for probably a couple of games. It's likely that he will also miss tomorrow night's game in Sacramento, but the Kings will be back at the Memorial Coliseum for a rare home Monday night game, and the thought now is that Wayne probably will be back then. So right away, the Trailblazers are going to get a double dose of the new Kings and Dick Mata. And if you have joined us late, Mata's the guy in control now at Sacramento. I don't know if I'd want to be the guy that's in control of Sacramento right now. It's a team at 720, and it, you know he's not Lenny Wilkins in the sense that I've been sitting with this team. I've evaluated the personnel. I really believe in it, and all I need to do is go down and massage a few egos. He's got to whip these horses, and he's got to find out, find out who can play and who can't, and what players will fit his style of play. I thought when these coaches went into the broadcast booth, they discovered what a great job we have and didn't necessarily want to go back, but some of those old horses keep going back to the trough, don't they? Well, the thing that you have to understand about coaching, it is a special disease unto itself. <laughs> and once you've got it, there's no cure for it. No, and, and you talk to these coaches, and I, and I guess that's what makes some of these guys really good, is that I don't think there's a coach alive that doesn't believe that he can go in and make the difference. I don't care if these guys are seven and 20, I can make the difference with this team. Well, I think he's had a realistic outlook in saying that it's going to be a slow process. Nothing's going to happen right away. Wanted to say hello to Sherry and the girls in Buffalo, Texas. And it's tough to read the signature. I think it's Doug Hovley or Hovley or Howley who's here tonight at the ball game. Here's Kersey's first shot. One of those three guys said hello to his kid. Well, he came by and, and uh, up here on, on sad business. His mother had a, a stroke, so he's up here, and she's a great Blazer fan, so he's got the tickets tonight. Uh, you see Rick Adelman, and what he'll probably be concerned about is the start of the team here in the third period. They had such great success. Can they keep that kind of pressure going? You know that Stockton and Malone will try to bring them back a basket at a time. And again, one side script is that despite that 40% Utah shooting, Stockton has not missed a shot. Just like the first half in Salt Lake City when he went eight for eight. Duck. Tap up it in. Buck Williams. Or Buck Williams, six points. Portland by 17, opening minute, third quarter. Pat Lafferty and Steve Jones courtside at the Coliseum. Our executive producer and director, George Wash, were assisted here by Monica Spolstra, our assistant director, and our statistician is the reliable Stan Menashe. Reliable on the three-pointer, Bobby Hanson misses. Well, he capped it back out. Blue Edwards trying to create something and does for Eaton over the top. The first basket for Mark Eaton. He did not have a basket when the teams played at Utah. Only four free throws, but they were clutch. Porter, strong drive. Rolls off quarter, reload the offense. Now you gotta look what you've got. Now they get a switch back, but whenever you get a big on a little, then you gotta try to get a score. Nice fast break, and Edwards finishes in transition. Pretty break by the Jazz. The Jazz will come out with a 6-2 start, and this is just the kind of start that Rick Adelman did not want. He wants his team to respond. This is not going to be a game that you get easily if you go to sleep. Utah is capable of coming back, so you got to play the same game that got you the lead. Ten minutes to go, third quarter. Kersey. Tapped by Eaton to Blue Edwards. Eaton. Malone, power inside, can't score. Rebound, Drexler. Order to Duck. They missed the golden chance, but they get it back to Duck. 
You can almost see Duckworth's confidence in what he can do against Malone growing as the game goes on. Well, he knows he can beat Mark Eaton up and down the floor. He also knows he can beat him off the dribble. So now he's looking to do those things. That's what's known as smart offense. Did I say Malone? Well, it's us. Awesome. It's Eaton, of course. Thanks. There's Carl Malone. Malone trying to come through the defense of Buck Williams and the Trailblazers. There's two of them right there as he tries to power his way through. The call goes against him. That is the third personal foul against Malone. Now what you'd like to do is put the same kind of pressure on him to guard at the other end. Buck Williams. Williams rolls in for his eighth point. We're inside 8.50 to go third quarter. Neither team has committed 18 foul in the period. Portland leading by 17. Blue Edwards was naked underneath the basket. There was a miscue between Drexler and Kersey. They end up with Kersey on Bob Hansen. He scores. First basket for Hansen. Hansen and Eaton were scoreless in the first half. Drexler off for Porter. Return to Clyde. Block Mark Eaton. Clyde will get the ball and try again. Kersey. Four, yes, over Martin. Another offensive rebound for Percy and the NBA's best rebounding team. Malone. Doubled. That's what you want to do. You want to make that guy the passer. Of course, you want to make that ball come over the top. That guy's got to throw through Edwards. Drops that one down. Edwards has eight. Portland's lead 15. Porter, well off the mark. Eaton, another rebound. Eaton has eight boards. Blocking foul. Good look ahead by John Stockton. Fine. Bob Hansen right there, he creates a contact but gets the whistle. Stockton Malone, the two-man game, the reach foul by Drexler. 13. Third foul on Clyde. The intensity and the awareness of the ball that Portland had in the second period is not evident right now. Malone gets deep into the paint before the defense can react, and he'll go to the line. Portland now with two players that have three fouls, Buck Williams and Clyde Drexler for the Jazz. Malone, the only player with three. Those numbers tell you that since he was that middle round pick in the first round by the Utah Jazz, he's gotten better with every year. 7.5 left third quarter, Portland by 14. Now Buck Williams is asking for a little room to operate. They don't give him any. They pick up the foul against Lou Edwards. In a situation where a strong offensive player has three fouls you want to get that fourth you want to get people out of the way so he has a chance to possibly get that fourth put him down on the bench Kersey contact with Eaton no foul Jerome stays with it and draws the foul Derek Stafford might have missed the first call but he did not miss the second Percy on the year has struggled at the line. And his scoring also down from last year and the year before as Jerry Sloan calls the next offensive set. One of two for Kersey, who has seven points. Portland by 15, as you see. And we're moving up on seven minutes left third quarter. Malone. Rebound again, Jerome Kersey. Kersey with six rebounds. Bryant leads the team with nine. Williams. Half by Kersey won't go, and here's Eaton over the tall trees to Stockton. Hanson. Good nice gamble that time. Porter probably could have made a play on the ball, but realized he was two on one. Drexler. Porter tipped to miss. 
Perry down, ball out of bounds, Stockton lobbying, and we have a timeout. Ball with 6.28 to go in the third quarter, and Portland leading the Jazz by 13. If you're a bargain hunter, you'll love this. January bargain days, now at Les Schwab. Who says January has to be dull? Not at Les Schwab, not now. It's January bargain days. As each store pulls out all the stocks, cleans house, clears out, and gets rid of odds and ends, one of a kinds and leftover stock. You can't miss the bargain. Just look for the red tag. Enjoy popcorn or peanuts, balloons for the kids, and red tag bargains that say this is a great buy. January bargain days, now at Les Schwab. tune an engine than eat. Who reads a tachometer like a love story. For whom the roar of fully blown horsepower is a lullaby. Have we got a machine for you. We call it the F-16 Fighting Falcon. It'll crank out a generous 50,000 horsepower, enough to push it from zero to 1350 in under a minute. And in the hands of the right mechanic, it'll blow the doors off anything. Aim high, Air Force. When a team has been dominated in the first half and they're a pretty good team, they go in the locker room and they make some adjustments. So the Jazz have made some adjustments. Now it's time for Portland to reload, see if they can shut them down. Hampson. Bobby Hampson. 6'6 six, six guard out of Iowa with his sixth point of the quarter and it's 69-58. Lasers led by 17 at the half. Steele Stockton. Percy chasing. Tough try under the pressure of Jerome, and Stockton makes it. And again, he has not missed a shot. Quarter for three. No. Rebound, Carl Malone. Stockton. You now they had Utah in a game in which they were not getting transition opportunities. Now they've been able to get some cheap poop. Now they come back and try to work their offensive set. Two-man game between Stockton and Malone. And here comes Kersey with Williams on his right, Porter on his left. Tough spin for Buck. Hanson to Stockton. 5.15 left in the third. Malone can't deliver, but draws the foul. It's Kevin Duckworth's first personal foul. You'll see Duckworth try to get in front, doesn't quite get set. If he'd been able to get himself set, he would have gotten a charge out of that. And you'll see Carl Malone tiptoe his way up the stairs and into the stand. There's Jerry Sloan on the bench. Carl Malone, who has led the West in scoring in each of the last two NBA All-Star games. I rather suspect he'll be in the starting lineup for the ball game this year in Miami State, February 11. 5.07 left. They had the play hooked up for Drexler. They finally get it back as Mark Eaton had tipped the ball. Duckworth tonight, Steve, 9 of 12 shooting. We talked earlier about that 34% Kevin had against the Jazz a year ago. It's a 10-point game. Utah cut it to eight. Stockton and Thurl Bailey. See Stockton just looked him off with that pass. Now you got a good hard pressure on him. Shot clock's at two. You don't want to foul. Tough shot, Hanson. Hanson's come alive in the third quarter with eight points. He's given the Jazz a huge lift. He's made all of his shots. Drexler countered with his first basket of the quarter and Clyde has 19. 73-63, 4.20 to go in the third. 
Uh, that was a last second decision by Drexler. He looked like he was going to pass a little finger roll in for two. Stocked him right at the basket. Mark Eaton, bad hands. Porter. Portland by a dozen at the four minute mark. Those are the kind of plays that her to come back. You make a good penetration, you get right at the hoop, and then you don't get anything for it, and your opponent comes back and scores. Bailey. Rolling hook shot off to Buck Williams. Blazers run the break. Porter. Score! Perry Porter and the Blazers are up by 14. 19 for Drexler, 18 for Duckworth, a dozen for Terry Porter. The Blazers' top three score. Steele, Kersey, three on two. Stockton back. Drexler angry. Stockton made the right move in going over to Drexler after he got a good piece of him. Got him right around the net. But that shows a competitive fire of John Stockton. He's not going to give up anything cheap. The two-shot foul, no breakaway foul. Drexler had the advantage. Two shots, no breakaway call. And Clyde makes the first. The ruling on a breakaway foul, so everyone understands, is you have to have a clear advantage, and A, it has to be body-to-body -body contact from the rear. Drexler gets both of the free throws. And Portland, with the lead cut to eight, has now rebuilt it to 16, and three minutes left, third quarter. The real key for Kersey in this half has been his pressure defensively. He has been stepping in the pass lane, knocking balls loose, become very active in a very physical game. Timeout, 2.45 left in the third. The Blazers 79 and the Jazz 63. Let me have you share some thoughts, perhaps, on offensive philosophy as you see the red hot and rolling blimp here at the Memorial Coliseum. I'm sure a lot of fans are wondering, John Stockton makes all seven shots in the first half, has taken only one and made it in the third quarter. If you go to your hot shooter, why isn't Stockton getting more shots? Well, Stockton has a two-pronged job. He can get a shot anytime he wants it because he has the ball the majority of the time. The greatest part of his job is to make sure that he keeps everybody involved, particularly the people up front first with Carl Malone and then throw Bailey and whoever else may then be in a position to get a shot. So he's got to be able to read that situation and give his team what they need and at the same time give them that scoring and keep the other people involved. Malone or Stockton in, uh, in the last ball game with the Trailblazers where he played so brilliantly, made his first 11 shots and finished 12 out of 14, actually said later that when he's hot like that, he actually feels a little maybe a desire to pull back a little bit from the offensive end and say, I need to get my teammates in the game more. The situation is always that you don't want to, when, when a player is like Stockton, where he thinks pass first, you don't want to think that though you're not doing your job well. And his first consideration is always what his teammates are doing. Two forty-five left third quarter. We've got a bunch of new faces in the ball game. The Trailblazers return Cliff Robinson to the lineup, and the Jazz go with Delaney Rudd, Eric Lechner, Mike Brown, Daryl Griffith, and Thurl Bailey remains. Porter finds the duck. Can't put it in the pond, and Lechner rebounds. Here's Delaney Rudd. Brown. You see Mike Brown has learned that if you get out on the break, good things will happen for you. He's run the floor much better this year. Gets two. 
Duckworth. Draws the foul from foul prone Eric Lechner. Lechner's a fine offensive player, but lacks a lot of finesse at the defensive end. Duckworth's first trip to the line tonight has made 9 of 13 shots and has 18 points. Well, Lechner is still learning what the NBA is all about, and the strength of his game is at the offensive end, but he can be a better defensive player. Tried to react to Buck Williams, then come back out, picks up the personal foul. Duckworth has a chance to get to 20 with this free throw. There's Carl Malone watching on the bench. His Jazz down by 16, and we're almost at the two-minute mark left third quarter. Jazz, remember, had beaten the Blazers 9 of 10. And there's Lechner doing the shuffle underneath. Again, it's the activity defensively that has forced a number of turnovers here of late for the Jazz. Drexler came flying at Lechner, who was trying to get himself in a power position, traveled in doing so. From Stan Menashe, Jazz turnover 16, Portland only 7. Buck Williams. Foul is on Eric Lechner. His second foul gets a quick clinic in avoiding the pump fake from Thurl Bailey. Oh, uh, you see Buck Williams gets a little move across the middle and then gets underneath the defenders and he gets a chance to go to the free throw line. The Jazz made a short spurt. Portland ma made a good response with some good defensive pressure and they regained control of the ball game. The lead is back to 17. Buck Williams slated for a major feature article in Sports Illustrated this coming week. Yeah, the title is probably happy to be anywhere but New Jersey. <laughs> 82-65, 135 left third quarter. Cliff Robinson, Thurl Bailey doing battle down low. Shot clock at five, blocked by Robinson. Can't finish off the Drexler miss. Robinson tap. No, they wave it off. Offensive basket interference. Now you see four cracks at it. Portland came out with some big plays. Cliff Robinson comes down smiling, saying, Duck, you took my hoop away. And Duckworth is saying, No, it was out. You'll see a good defensive play get you started at the other end. Now you see how many people are trying to run with Terry Porter now. Duckworth on one side. Drexler tried to make a tough follow on the on the come around the other side of the hoop. Mark Bryant back in, Buck Williams is out. Darryl Griffith has it knocked away. Lechner and Duckworth tangle on the side, and the foul is on Kevin, his second. Good block, Cliff Robinson. It looked as though Griffin was at the basket clean. Robinson made a good reaction to knock the ball away. Danny Young checks into the Blazer lineup, replacing Terry Porter. And again, he'll be matched up with Delaney Rudd, his ex-running mate for two years at Wake Forest. Getting to the NBA wasn't easy for either one. Mike Brown, Delaney Rudd, two. Here's Drexler, Young, the return, score! what's known as a windmill power jam and Drexler wound it up and drove it down. Dropped in from the attic. <laughs> Bailey. Thurl gets it in. He has only six. Again, averaging just over 13, but traditionally 17 to 18. Robinson. Travel first. 24.6 seconds left in the quarter. So the game clock and the time clock, our shot clock almost identical. Mike Brown, Lechner. Well, those two guys, you know what handling the ball. Here's Drexler the other way. 11 seconds. Duckworth. Kevin Duckworth. Shot off after three quarters. Portland right in the gravy train with biscuit wheels. I love what you do for me, Toyota. When Toyota.
dominated the latest light duty truck customer satisfaction ratings, some people weren't at all surprised. How does Forerunner rate in customer satisfaction? Toyota's number one. Toyota vans? Number one. Toyota Land Cruiser? Number one. Toyota pickups? Number one. Proving what we do for you, we do better than anyone else. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Are you ready, hon? Oh, no. I've left my medicine at home. Look, don't worry. I don't know what everything is. there a Payless drugstore in this town? Payless? Sure, there's one not far from here. You can count my on Payless. My wife and I are up here on vacation, and she's forgotten her prescription. For what you need. No problem. We can have your prescription transferred right away. When you need it. Everything's going to be okay. Thank you. Satisfaction. You deserve it. We deliver it. Compaq is the leader in performance and intelligent innovation. Martin, we've got an hour tops. Make or break. Hey, it's made. Compaq has gone the extra mile for today's power-hungry users. Ten minutes to spare. Once again, Martin comes through with a powerful performance. Never eat pasteurized. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered his real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. Portland's Memorial Coliseum, our backcourt comparison. Portland, Utah. Well, Portland backcourt dominating the game because of the combination strength of Drexler and Porter. They come back with a totally different lineup. Jackson Malone, Lou Edwards, blocked by Kirk Robinson. Blazers with Danny Young in transition. Mark Bryant comes inside and scores! Mark Bryant! Six points, nine rebounds for Mark Bryant. Portland by 21, their largest lead of the night. Good, strong pass ahead by Danny Young made that possible. Golden grip misses from the outside. Not so golden anymore. Buck Williams. Yes. Buck Williams with the 11 points. Blazers with an unusual lineup right now in Williams and Bryant on the floor at the same time. And Mark Bryant, as you mentioned, Steve, with Wayne Cooper out, playing center against Sparky. The clear side, now that's the way you like to take John Stockton 90% of the time. He's good enough to where he forces you to bring him back the other way. But Portland has control of the game. And they've really gotten some high percentage shots here early. Daryl Griffith steps on the end line after a good steal. Both Duckworth and, De and the Drexler, quick update, have made 10 of 15 from the floor. Carl Malone, 5 of 12 from the floor. Stockton remains perfect, 8 of 8. Cliff Robinson. 90-67 Blazers. Malone. Well, he was bringing that one in COD. And he was going to bring that one out of the sky. And it was going to hurt somebody. Grazen Petrovic reaches in and gets a piece of the arm before he can raise it in that explosive dunk that he likes to make at the end of a transition run. Hasn't he seen those NBA fantastic films? I know they show those overseas. I'll tell you, we've got some baseline camera guys that have seen those very up close and personal. Malone misses both. How sweet it is for the fans here tonight. As we mentioned again, the Jazz not only have won nine of ten, they've beaten Portland four straight here. Petro in trouble. And the ball belongs to Utah. Brian tried to clear everyone away, so Portland would keep it stocked very quickly. At Blue Edwards, nice pass. Yeah. Levi Blue. Yes, he is. There's the guy who's actually a little blue. Jerry Sloan, whose team is down by 21. Just over 10 minutes left. Fourth quarter, Danny Young. Rebound, Mark Eaton. 
thing you don't want to do is allow Utah to get back in the game by pushing the ball. Stockton, still perfect. Nine for nine. 90-71 Portland. Williams, full spin inside, ball loose and out of bounds to the Jazz. They had a good opportunity, just couldn't finish the play. What Portland has got to do back is get back first and stop Stockton second. Edwards, Malone, off the mark to Mark Bryant. That is now a career high for Mark Bryant. In fact, two over, he has 11 rebounds tonight. Career high, Mark Bryant. Petrol on the money. Rosen Petrovic. 92-71. Two-man play, Stockton and Malone. Ripping for three. Still shot. Mark Eaton puts the ball on the floor. Wrong guy to be putting the ball on the floor. Well, Eaton didn't have control of the dribble, and he had to bring it down to try to get control, knocked away. 8.54 to go, and if the Jazz want to get in it, they want to see this thing down to a 10-12 to 12 point game at the six-minute mark. Double on Malone. A little blind pass, and Griffiths somehow gets a handle on it, puts it home. Well, the ball popped up. They did a good job of double-teaming and forcing a quick pass. Griffith actually wasn't ready to make the play. Ended up catching the shot. Open man Robinson. Comes hard against Blue Edwards, and Edwards able to draw the charge. Foul is on Cliff Robinson. Control at the offensive end is critical, and Cliff Robinson can get a shot against Blue Edwards almost any time he wants. Now he's just got to get himself in a position where he's comfortable and looking at the hoop. The lead is 19. Eaton. Foul call. Ooh, what will the replay show on that one? Robinson right there to pick the pocket of Mark Eaton. He'll come across, lay the ball out there, and get nothing but ball, but he won't get the call. The Jazz with it on the side in the new 24. Stockton finally misses his shot. He had made his first nine. Petro. Young is open. Stockton flies by. And Young makes the play. First basket for Danny Young. 94-73, inside eight minutes left in the game. Blazers looking for their 21st win, trying to go 15-2 here at the Coliseum. Looking for Malone, you see the results as they find him right at the hoop. Now that was airman. That's a good play, and that's an easy play for him as Petrovic comes off the screen and nails two. Petro, three of five shooting, two rebounds, three assists. 96-75, Blazers. Lost the ball, Robinson with it. Re-lost to Malone. No traveling called. And Malone can't score. Here comes Drazen. Timeout Portland, seven minutes left in the game. The Blazers leading by 21. Back at Portland's Memorial Coliseum, the Trailblazers leading by 21. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm having fun. We've done some games, Steve, in Salt Lake City that have not been a whole lot of fun. Well, you sound like a guy that's getting a little bit of revenge, but Portland has gotten this lead and been able to maintain it with their intensity and aggressiveness at both ends of the floor. There was a little bit of a lull for them in the top of the third period of play. They were able to get it back, and they've had command of the ball game since then. I think Jerry Sloan realizes that this one is just about over for his team, and he will probably make some adjustments in his lineup the final seven minutes. And the question now will be who will get some playing time for the Portland Trailblazers as everyone has played and played well. Byron Irvin is the only Trailblazer yet to see action. 
Well, after three quarters into Seattle, it was a seven-point ball game between the Sonics and Miami. But Bernie Bickerstaff sent a wake-up call to his club, and in the first four minutes of the third or the fourth quarter, Seattle outscored Miami 28 to five. That will change the complexion <laughs> of a game, but I think it's only 18 to five. Oh, it is. You are really happy with those numbers, and I think it's all because the Trailblazers are beating the dead. Old friend of yours out on the floor now, Jose Ortiz. Drexler has come back out on the floor. I don't know how much longer he will play. Drive Petrovic sits down. I think that he's only going to be in. Excuse me for a couple of minutes. All right, and there's Jose Ortiz, the ex-Oregon State star playing spare minutes with the Jazz this year, but now in the game for the final seven minutes of play. So we'll have a chance to see how he's doing. Here's Mark. Brian, another rebound. And Brian scores! Prediction, post-game guest, Mark Bryan. 98-75. Ortiz. Lob inside. A hold, yes. Mark Bryant. Well, he acknowledges that Bryant and Bob Hansen banged shoulders, and it looks as though Hansen came out the worst of that. He's cranking that right arm up right now. He's probably got hit right on the nerve, and it's a little dead. But what teams try to do, and why you see so many collisions, is they try to disrupt the cutters to prevent them from going where they like, or team misses. Here's Clyde. Wow. Cliff Robinson from Clyde Drexler. It's a highlight showcase of the Blazers' lead, 175. Now you asked about what the Trailblazers could do to get into a transition game. They can force quick outside shots, and when they push it, you see how much trouble the Jazz have in returning from one end of the floor to the other. Double team on Lechner. Eric Lechner, second basket, 177. Blazers 25 point lead a moment ago, their largest of the night. Jazz biggest lead was 5, 17 12. Terry Port. Looked good, but kicked out to Mike Brown. Delaney Rudd. Down goes Lechner. Mark Bryant, the culprit. Fourth foul on Mark. Into the ball game for Portland. Byron Irvin, you see him wearing number 23. 6'5 six, six, out of Missouri. And Buck Williams goes out. Now the Jazz also bring in one new player. And that's Eric Johnson. He's the younger brother of Vinny. And yes, was with Portland in summer camp. Illegal defense. They'll get Clyde Drexler. Drexler was supposed to be out guarding Mike Brown, sucked back in below the line. So it's an easy call. It's the first illegal defense against Portland tonight. Ortiz. Jose not really playing the strength of his game, which traditionally has been low post up play. Drexler! for Clyde Drexler, 102-77. Mike Brown, block Cliff Robinson, Lechner. Now you see the ability that Robinson has to get to balls even after they've left players' hands. He's had several blocks tonight. Drexler to the cutter. Bryant drew the foul as he put it on the floor. Let's go back and watch a Clyde Drexler highlight play as Young and Petrovich come back in. Now you'll see Drexler and the lane will open up and he will just explode and extend and put the cap on it for two more. And a great replay and the Blazer Cable's camera, <laughs> Blazer Cable cameras caught it as we got to climb aboard the Glide Mobile. Petro. Foul came with Petro on the ground. Ortiz with a tough assignment, handling a ball handler, and Petrovic went for the pump fake. Not comfortable out on the floor, particularly guarding someone that can look to the hoop. Petrovic trying to score. Rolls across to Eric Johnson. Rebound Eric Lechner. Rudd. And scores.
scores against his old teammate, Danny Young. Delaney Rudd. First basket for Rudd. 102-81, 4 10 to play. Irvin. Jump ball. Irvin has the ability to not only score but to make things happen. Thought he had a quick shot at the hoop, went inside, challenged Mike Brown, got tied up. Portland controls the pass. Robinson. Byron Irvin. All of the Blazers shooting down tonight have now scored. All 10 in the scoring column with Irvin's first basket. The Blazer lead 23. Ortiz, tough shot, and go, rebound, Mark Bryant. Well, there's a guy that's 6'10", shooting over a player's 6'4", and yet he's finessing his way in. That will get you a lot of bench time, so he's got to play bigger to his size, tries to pass the ball, turnover. Mark Bryant, 13 rebounds. Johnson. Form looks a little like older brother Vinny. Uh, he's, he's got the right idea. If he's going to be like Vinny, you got to shoot it. He gets it up quick. Vinny's having a tough year. Not shooting well. Young, Irvin, easy. Danny Young, Byron Irvin, and it's 106-83. Portland by 23. Inside three minutes to play. Lechner. And we have a timeout, Utah Jazz, Portland leading by 23. Blazers have a nice schedule in the month of January, Steve. Most of the ball games are here at home. There are not a lot of the real blue chip opponents on the card. We've got a couple of televised games later in the month. We will be in Detroit against the world champion Pistons on the 13th. And Buck Williams goes home to the Meadowlands when we're in New Jersey on the 14th. Well, I think it's important what Portland has to do in this month is win basketball games and play with the kind of authority that they've shown tonight. When they come ready to play and play with this kind of aggressiveness and they can play with anybody in the league. And again, you want to learn something from every outing and make it work for you as you move through the season. And that's what the month of January can be for them. Something that turns a corner and pushes them up in a challenging position to where they have big games, they know they're ready to play them and win them. Well, we talked about the Trailblazers' home matchup, and of course the Sacramento Kings are on tap. The Blazers play in Sacramento tomorrow, and then Dick Motta, the new coach of the Kings, brings his team in. That'll be Danny Ainge and Wayman Tisdale, Monday night at 7.30. Remember, tickets remain available statewide at all G.I. Joe's Ticketmaster locations. Happy time for Jerome Kersey, the Blazer starters, and the Blazer bench. And certainly the fans tonight, Steve. The old nemesis, Utah, four straight wins here, nine out of the last ten. They will finally fall here tonight. Well, you see the game summary and the results. Duckworth and Drexler got off to a tremendous start. They got Portland a shot in the arm. Their shooting has been strong. Mike Bryant has had a career night on the board. Everyone has got to play. They have a uniform. They're waving it, telling you, take the headset off, come in. <laughs> Mark Bryant also gave Bobby Hansen a shot in the arm. Bryant's shot doesn't go. Young steals the pass. Can he save? Yes, Danny Young. Three steal, Johnson. Utah the other way, three on one. Three steal, Danny Young. Irvin. Leave Robinson, finger roll and score. 11 for Cliff Robinson, Portland by 25. We're coming up on two minutes to play. Steal, Byron Irvin, he's wide open. Young gets him the ball, spin move, Payne, score! Half a dozen for Byron. A minute 40 left. The lead is 27. 
Well, the Jazz know that there are days like this. This was traditionally the kind of beating that they took when they came to Portland before they found a way to crawl on top. Delaney Rudd with two from the outside. If you're wondering about Portland's largest margin of victory ever over Utah, 34. Danny Young. 112, 85, 120 to play. Alley oop, four tees, pump fake score. That's where Ortiz needs to be to be effective. Every player who's suited down tonight has scored in the game. Foul, Ortiz. Oh, One thirteen left. Right I think what Ortiz has come to realize is that he's never going to be a power player. So now, how can he play in the NBA? He is more of a finesse type of player, and he'll have to learn to adjust his skills on a team that plays a power game. Timeout. Timeout is Petrovic no, 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 no. and And Rick Edelman says, hey, let's make that a 20. Drazen called a timeout because he couldn't find the open man on the inbound. So Rick Edelman saying, Hey, we've got this thing comfortably in hand. Let's switch it to a 20. And for Jerry Sloan, well, he'll be regrouped and file this one away after a loss tonight. It's been a well, long time since Portland bumped the Jazz like this. Well, you know, you're, you would sound as though the Trailblazers have knocked off the Lakers or the Celtics, and, and it's in a championship game. This is a team that they're capable of beating. They finally have found a way to do it. When we come to that playoff series, if the two should meet and they're able to play like this, then we'll know that they've truly arrived. But Portland has been the aggressor tonight, and all the good things have happened for them. Ball still up for grabs, and finally comes out to Danny Young. Baseball pass to Irvin for three. No. Utah rebound. Mike Brown thunders out of backcourt. Rudd. Johnson misses. Rebound. Yes, Mark Bryan. 14 boards, score by Irvin, and he's got eight. And well, they won't take Irvin long. He's going to get double figures here if he gets one more shot at it. It's a chance to play. Final half minute coming up. Oh, oh, lost Ortiz. Oh, Air ball from four feet. Blazers lead by 27, inside 20. Three-point try, Cliff Robinson. Some nights it all goes your way. A 30-point whipping. Now 28, 10 seconds left. And a chance at double digits for Byron Irving. In some ways, Byron's had to back off a little bit with Rick Edelman trying to give Drazen Petrovic more time and experiment a little bit and see what Petro can and cannot do. Well, it has been difficult not only for Rick Edelman to try to figure out what to do with those two young players, who should get the playing time as he's gotten a chance to look at them both. Irvin at the line for the first time misses that one big. Byron 65% at the line. 117 to 89. And 118. Johnson. And that'll do it. The final score at Portland's Memorial Coliseum and a big night for Rick Adelman and the Portland Trailblazers. Portland 118 and Utah 89. in fresh dairy products. This voyage is for Pepsi drinkers everywhere. 
there's a whole nother world out there. Diet Coke. Discover the one calorie real cola taste worth leaving Pepsi for. The taste of it. One giant sip for mankind. Franz Trailblazer Trading Cards are back, and this year, Franz is celebrating the Blazers' 20th anniversary season with their biggest set ever, 20 cards, including head coach Rick Adelman, 10 current players, and 9 Blazer greats. Collect a different card each week in specially marked loaves of Franz Premium White Bread. You'll find Blazer legends Jeff Petrie and Bill Walton, current stars Clyde Drexler and Terry Porter, and rookie cards Cliff Robinson, Byron Irvin, and Drazen Petrovich. Look for your Franz Trailblazer Trading Cards this week and collect the entire set. I've got news that can save you time when you need it most, first thing every morning. It's the morning update right here on 1190 KEX Radio. Listen for just 20 minutes each morning and we'll give you all the information you need. You'll get frequent updates on the day's top news, Paul Harvey at 7.30, constant air watch traffic and weather, plus an in-depth weather forecast at a quarter past every hour. You can depend on us. Tomorrow, get your 20-minute morning update from 1190 KEX AM Radio. You see Portland's Memorial Coliseum in tonight's final score. A big Blazer win, and on a night like this, nothing shows great highlights better than television and Blazer cable. Let's enjoy them. Well, it was a, a Blazer ball game from midway in the second period on, and even though the Utah Jazz tried to rally at the top of the third period with some good, innovative plays by Blue Edwards in an exchange between Mark Eaton Kevin Duckworth and the Trailblazers had the answers tonight. They were aware of what they had to do at both ends of the floor. They did a good job of forcing the Utah Jazz to play the kind of game that they're not comfortable in, and that's an up-tempo game. They do have some people that can make those kinds of plays. Good athletic effort by Blue Edwards to score the hoop. But again, it was the activity of Portland at both ends of the floor. A cursey miss, he followed, got it down, and Portland just would not quit tonight in their intensity and their effort to get the job done. Duckworth thought he made the perfect pass to Terry Porter. It turned out to be a great steal for John Stockton. And the Jazz at that point looked as though they might be able to build some momentum in the ball game off of plays from Stockton and Hanson as he got that one against the shot clock. The Jazz were at that point within eight. But it was Buck Williams and the Trailblazers continuing to push the pace, get into the open court. Terry Porter with a good hesitation to go right to the basket for an easy score. Jazz didn't have a single period in which they scored 25 points, Steve, and Portland scored 26 or more in every quarter. Again, the presence of Mark Eaton, which had been such a problem for the Trailblazers, was not a factor tonight because they looked to see where he was, moved the ball, moved him around, were able to get into a transition game. Mike Brown understands the importance of running. He was out on the break, making it easy for him. Danny Young back to Drexler, and he thunders that one out of the sky. Drexler was really the catalyst tonight. He came out, he was ready to play, he was aggressive, and his teammates seemed to feed off of him. Stockton trying to steady his team, keep him in the ball game. Good decision to make the jump shot. Nice live pass off the dribble to Carl Malone. They kept the combination of Stockton and Malone from having gigantic nights. They kept everyone else under control. Got a big effort from Mark Bryant, who was on both ends of the floor and took advantage of the fact that he got a chance to play tonight. 15 rebounds for Mark Bryant. Drexler, again, showing his great athletic ability in the open court, made the correct read, and then just floated in, dropped it down for two more. But you see the type of shots that Portland was getting all night long, right at the basket. And everyone is saying that, uh, you know, Mark Eaton doesn't allow you to get those kinds of shots. But if you're playing a transition game where you move the ball, move people, move him around, it's much easier to get inside Cliff Robinson with two more as Portland looked to run all night long. Blazers had 28 lay-ins or dunks. Now Byron Irvin using his good athletic ability spun in. Now he was only in for about five minutes and uh, ended up with nine points. Did an excellent job of getting out at the finishing end of the break and finishing. And he welcomed the playing time. Looks for a three-pointer from Cliff Robinson. I mean, when those shots are going down, you know it was your night. 
well, it definitely was a trailblazer's night, but they set the tone with good aggressive play, and everybody that played in the ball game tonight played that way. They played with that kind of intensity, and, and certainly Salvador, Ronnie Nunn, and Woody Mayfield. And the tap one by the Blazers as Mayfield put it in the air.